So we have a TAVR application. It's called TAVR Planning. Uh, you can load as many series as you want. Normally, I would, you know, they do the end systolic phase. So with our TAVR planning, the, the thing is, is, is I like to say up front, is very customizable. We have a generic TAVR worksheet. However, we do have a generic worksheet for the Edward Sapien valve and the core valve. You know, but if there's other measurements you want or like or don't want, you can do it. So I'm going to go. Do you guys use the Edwards valve most of the time? Yes, well, almost everybody does. So just to go through it quickly, I went ahead and picked the Sapien valve. So it said, I'm going to work. Huh? Oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh because you're one, you're looking at my computer, so I customize. We don't have a Watchman application, but I built one using this TAVR protocol because if I'm showing someone how to do some, you know, measurements for the Watchman procedure, I that's what I mean. It's customizable. I made one so it's easy for me to walk through it. So it can be done. I have people who make them for uh, pulmonary vein measurements. You know, they just kind of cheat and use the TAVR worksheet for that. But anyway, we can always circle back. <laughs> uh, so the first thing you always is got to set your valve plane. So if I click valve plane, I come over to this axial image. And what I'm going to do is find the nadir of each cusp starting with the right. So see, here's the right cusp. I'm just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, click, and then I'm going to do the same for the non-coronary and the uh, left, click. Now, this one's got a big hunk of calcium, so it's kind of hard, you know, I'm just going to say it's here. But as soon as I make that third click, do you see this um, purple line? So I can hit my space bar and make sure that I am at the very bottom of each cusp. So like if I think, ah, oh, you know, maybe I'll move that one a little bit, you know, because you know, everything's, all the measurements are based on where this valve plane is. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yep, yep. So, you know, I'm just trying to look and see. You know, it does look like I'm at the bottom. This one, you know, kind of looking at it, you know, it's just kind of hard to tell with that big hunk of calcium. Maybe I'll move it there. Um, the next one is the annulus size. So I have mine. So when I double click in the annulus right here at this location, click, click, it'll automatically give me the area, the circumference, two diameter measurements, and then give me the average for that. Of course, if I think, you know, I really don't like to include that, I can always um, adjust it as well. Yeah, I could get my little pencil and say, no, I really want it here, or maybe, you know, like, so you can adjust it, and it'll automatically update your area, circumference, and bi-dimensional measurements. Hit done. The next one, sinus of Valsalva width. So I just go up to my sinuses. I like to do three measurements, left mouse drag, one measurement, left mouse drag, two. And then it'll give me the average as well. Hit done. And then, you know, so, uh, left, this is your sinus height. So it's, uh, it's from the sinotubular junction down. So you see where the left main's coming in? I'm going to click right at the side of tubular junction with a single click, and it will measure down to the valve plane for me. And then I like to just go to uh, left main height. So I go right at the bottom of the ostium for the left main. Single click, I'll do that measurement again for me. Now, the, the reason I keep hitting done is, one, because now they're locked in but it does generate what we call a report. And on this report page, it'll have a list of all the measurements I've done already. That can be copied in Excel or to a clipboard 
or sent as a DICOM image into a PAC system. And then I can go back to my tab or planning. You know, like here's the right sinus height. So I just kind of, you notice my valve plane never moves. So here's the top of the sinus. There's that measurement. You know, so you, you can, uh, here's an LBOT measurement. So you kind of go down, you know, LBOT and double click. You know, there you go. The thing is, at the right mouse click, you can edit these. So it's customizable. So, like, I have a lot of people who do not get the size reduction diameter. You can delete it off if you don't want it. You know, I have some people that would like to have multiple, you know, aorta measurements. You can add new measurements and totally customize this for whatever um, you want. Right mouse click, edit the measurement list. So here's, like, here's the Sapien. So I'll copy it, rename it. Let's see, you're right. Uh, uh, I have people that put their names because they like their, you know, uh, and you can make as many as you want. So let's say the annulus size, I'm getting the area, the circumference, the minimum and the maximum, the average diameter. Well, if you didn't want the circumference, you could turn it off. You know, if you didn't want the average, you could turn it off. So you can see right now I'm getting the average diameter for the sinuses. But you have options. It's just most people like to just do three, you know. But you can see you can change this. You can change the name of it. You can and customize this to whatever you like. And then when you save it, so then when you open it, you would come down here and pick your list and have your own list. So it is kind of, I could spend some time, you know, showing you this, but um, I didn't know how you wanted it. 